at least five minutes of getting questions of the audience um, uh, here. Um, I didn't want to interrupt our lively debate, <laughs> and it's Danielle who for sure gets the floor first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pillar two. Uh, I, I love this kind of pillar two. It lasted for one year. Uh, <laughs> after one year, requirement guidance. Mm -hmm. Then uh, there is a tendency to ask uh, risk by risk uh, pillar two. Uh, after we learn through the crisis that all the risks are interrelated and we need a holistic <coughs> approach. I don't see how we deal with your uh, <laughs> sovereign risk in this risk by risk uh, approach. Uh, I think the, temp uh, the template of EBA for risk by risk will have to have one more line <laughs> and it will be indeed uh, very visible. And my question is, can we uh, save a little bit of the 2015 pillar two by stopping precisely what uh, Sabine is mentioning? Mm. We need uh, CET1 for pillar two requirement on guidance. Mm. We have learned through the crisis mm. that uh, pillar two uh, subordinated debt, uh, well, tier two subordinated yeah. debt, debt so contingent capital is used less as going concern capital. This is for gun concern capital. This is for Elke. It was not used during the crisis before uh, the, the state money was put, the state aid was put in the bank. So please, we should not do the same mistake a second time. So soon after the, it was done the first time. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, you are preaching in the church. Yeah. <laughs> agree. Yeah, do we, do we disagree here agree. at one point yeah. on the stage? No, so we, yes. We, we understand Ken, <coughs> Daniel, but Nicolas is anxious to get the floor. No, I'm not too anxious, but uh, I cannot resist, uh, which is a different emotion. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Danielle, in a way, introduced my question with her uh, initial statement, which is uh, having sovereign risk in the framework. And my question is uh, to the legislators, so primarily to Sven, and, Jonat and Sir Jonathan, um, uh, <laughs> but uh, Zabina, you may want to interject. Tackling concentration risk in sovereign exposures, right? So home bias um, is best, I think most of us will agree this would be best addressed in the pillar one measure, uh, but can it be addressed at all with pillar two is my question. Okay, I will, I will give you my opinion first, my personal opinion first, and then I would ask the others, please. I think um, that we, I mean, that it should be addressed in pillar one, yeah? In particularly, the concentration uh, risk part with regard to the capital, yeah? Um, as I see that there will be a very difficult uh, discussion, you know, with regard to risk weights, yeah, and the risk sensitivity, you know, which country gets which risk rate, etc. Um, I think one should still do it, yeah, but the least, you know, the least, it should be a concentration risk measure, which we should have in pillar one. Now you can ask yourself, yes, if it is not there, pillar two says, if you see risk which are not there, which are not covered by pillar one, do it in pillar two. But there are very clear, coming from all sides and from many important stakeholders, lawmakers too, by the way, not only for um, sovereign, but for AML oh, yeah. risk and governance risk too, the very clear, the very clear message, if the lawmaker in pillar one explicitly decided not to take up this risk. How can you dare, as a supervisor, to do this indirectly via pillar two? Mm. You are not a regulator, you are not a lawmaker, you are not, you know. We saw this, you know, in other cases where we had a lot of pushback, yeah? And that is exactly the same for the sovereign. So there is a certain kind of tension between if the lawmaker discussed something and explicitly decided, no, we will not touch it with capital requirements, mm. with large exposure rules, yeah? How can we, yeah, as not being a regulator, do something else? And now I will share something with you from last week's ICBS, because I was on a panel there and I found myself in the mid of the Fed, Canadian, OSFI, Hong Kong, 
um, authority as well as Australia, and I was the <laughs> only one, yeah, from a supervised authority who has no what is called regulatory powers. So no transformation of very basic principles via the supervisor into then supervisory rules. Yeah. Yeah? Because we have a different system, which I value very much. Do not misunderstand me. But this is talking about institutional setup. You know, when everybody around you in the Basel Committee says, well, we will do the transfer of Basel mostly, you know, we will go to the lawmaker and they, they have a say in some, but we will do, we will set the details, etc. Uh, that is a, a very difficult issue and it, it links directly to your sovereign risk, by the way. Jonathan. Basel. And then I think this will be the final. Um, the final round, because this is oh, really the, okay. the, f the final round for everybody <laughs> well, first to of all, add. I'm not, I was, I w I'm not a legislator, I'm a private citizen, and I don't think the Commission ever really considered itself a legislator, so I was never a legislator. Yeah. I, I was a civil servant. Uh, <laughs> but I agree entirely with what you say. We are not a country. Uh, we have a delicate institutional balance. We have the Moroni principle. Uh, change, <laughs> change, get rid of it, the treaty, if you want, but it, we haven't done so. Uh, it is infinitely preferable for Pillar 1 to take its responsibility and deal with these issues in the law. And I agree entirely. If there is any suggestion that the lawmakers have considered something and not done it, then I think we are uh, taking a big risk uh, envisaging that uh, it should be done at a Pillar 2 level. You can get away with that perhaps in a uh, stable democratic country. We are stable, we are democratic, we are a union. Okay, many thanks to Jonathan. Jonathan. You know, I would, I would just echo what you just said. I would, okay. I would associate myself with it, I would agree. <laughs> now that Andrea is moving from London, I would move EBA to Frankfurt and make that a, a unit of <laughs> the SSM. I'm familiar with all the countries on your ICBS panel. I can't imagine having supervisors not able to change rules if they find that they're not working, having to go through some other party. I've never lived in an environment like you have to put up with. Well, uh, <laughs> so uh, first uh, I, I have to say, uh, when it came to the NPLs, I was, uh, perhaps this was one of the moments when I was least proud uh, of our, what our committee did uh, concerning banking supervision. I have to say that. Uh, I was very unhappy. I couldn't stop it because we had no majority as Greens. As you know, we are a very pro-European group, but we are not uh, in a majority position. We are a small group in the parliament. So uh, anyway, what you did with your addendum, even after all the quarrel, you achieved a great deal. So therefore, you and you helped us solving a problem which uh, at that moment wouldn't have been solved. So therefore, in a certain way, what you have said now uh, could easily be transferred uh, to the issue of NPLs and then uh, questioning the legitimacy of what you did in this field. I would not do this. I think you simply did your job. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, I still believe that your mandate and the law, uh, uh, so CRD, CRR, clearly gives you uh, the, uh, the pillar two powers, and they are formulated for good reasons in that open way. Uh, and uh, as long as the lawmaker doesn't change that formulation, and we didn't, you have all the rights and the obligation. If you see additional rights, uh, uh, additional risks, uh, to take action. And there is no limitation. Uh, and if we, if we want, are not happy with you doing your job, then it's our responsibility to re regulate it in the law. But until we don't, please do your job. And don't be scared by people who do not want that certain issues are tackled. So that would be my clear uh, view on this. And, uh, and beyond that, politically, of course, you, you, you said it. When EDIS uh, is now being somehow renegotiated, 
then of course uh, this issue will politically uh, be dealt with again. So there's a link and there we have an opportunity to, to tackle at least the concentration risk side. But um, as it's not uh, yet in the law, you have all the possibilities and there's of course also a link to the internal models and the trim operation, because as we all know, the internal models look at sovereign risk and therefore there's also a level playing field issue beyond uh, the pillar two uh, issue. There's a second lever which you might have uh, in your hands. And uh, yeah, and uh, I finish here, but I think uh, be bold and, uh, and uh, don't make yourself weaker than what we have voted in the law despite some politicians being unhappy about it. Let us see. Um, Eike, you're last. Yes. At this high level, to be the last one speaking is quite challenging. I think, let me start with saying, there is no risk-free asset. This holds true for sovereign risk too. So it needs to be reflected. I'm fully with you. Pillar one is the place to go and not pillar two because you need to sneak it in. The second part is clearly there is also quite a broad field of pillar two. Now you could also say in starting that debate you might trigger the first part of it. So I would agree if it's explicitly not in pillar one, it's difficult to get it in pillar two. But if you try to push it in pillar two, you might trigger the pillar one debate. Let's just start that way. But it's not just about sovereign. We have a number of other issues, and we have a number of issues to deal with. We can start with my favorite topic, IFRS 9 implementation and the like. So we need to address all of this. But I'm very sure, Sven, I wish that the SSM in the next five years is as agile as level playing field as bold and as outspoken as it has been in the first five years. And I think the, they have to fill fairly large shoes, in a, not in a literal sense, <laughs> and they have to fill very broad shoulders, also not in a literal sense. You are totally correct. Well, I think I, I did my work uh, today by getting a list together, what we should look like, what we should do, yeah, um, in order to give it to the next chair and the next vice chair for next year, um, so that everybody knows, yeah, uh, what are the expectations, uh, the challenges um, ahead. I would like you to still stay here and and you too, because I have to say some final words, Daniel. Yeah, I mean this is it. Ladies and gentlemen, and almost um, at least because there is still the buffet, yeah. So it's it's only me between yeah you and the buffet, and it will not take long, yeah. So to, so don't worry, yeah. I would like to thank all participants here on this panel. It was really a great discussion, and and many many thanks for your openness, your frankness. Um, and um, I give it back to you, Sven. It's not only us having to be bold. The lawmaker has to be bold too. <laughs>